Alright, what's up y'all, it's like a fan here, as I'm about to tell today's video, we're here to ask, how good really are slashers in NBA 2K23? We're here to talk about the style, what really makes it, and to be honest, whether it's good or not. So, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, if you do, for to drop a like, sub, if you're new to them, notice, all that good stuff, and like always, try to one 2,000 likes. Now, by my definition, a slasher truly is someone that has no three-pointer and chooses to be that as their one source of offense, being the only thing you can get is in the paint. But realistically, that's not a very easy explanation, and it's one that doesn't really fit a whole lot of molds. So I think what the community is going to be calling a slasher is someone that chooses to just go to the hoop a lot, even though they can still shoot the ball. So for instance, if you're playing against someone that I define as a rim runner, which, you know, it's not really even offensive in that sense either, it's just... To me, a rim runner means someone who can shoot but chooses not to. A slasher is someone that cannot shoot and just literally their only source is to get points in the paint. But again, we'll change the definition for today's video and just talk about everything to do with dunking, finishing, all that stuff in today's vid. That's just driving dunks, driving layups, etc. So let's talk about it. How good really are they? In my opinion, I think your ability is pretty limited if you don't use this feature right here with the dunk meter. I think it really expands your potential. It really unlocks unlimited potential for your build. And I gotta say, for me personally, I feel really dominant on this game whenever I use this stuff. If you can use it to its best ability, it's unbelievably crazy. Now, you should also know when not to use it because as a lot of people have clowned me for in videos or on comments talking about using the dunk meter on wide open dunks, the dunk meter on wide open dunks is extremely small. So if I were to pop it off right here, not only do I have very barely any time to react to the dunk meter actually popping up, but for that matter, elite slashers know about this. If you, if you flick up, then hold up on your right stick again, it will pop off a flashy dunk. And with that flashy dunk, you get severe takeover increase as well. Mind you, I'm running sponge in this video, not accelerator. So <laughs> this takeover that you get for doing those flashy dunks really does go crazy. And that's one of the perks and elite things about being a slasher is you can do those flashy dunks and get way more takeover. Again, being able to force your way into the paint, get that dunk meter to pop off. And when anything this defender does doesn't matter as long as I can time my meter, that's a crazy, crazy advantage as far as being able to play like this. Now, mind you, again, people could make a Build that can still shoot the ball it's actually the next one that i want to create on this game is one that can shoot the ball and still get contact dunks i think that'd be a lethal combo for me to try and come out here with but again i mean really like when people are playing this far off and you still get them beat like this this is an easy dunk opportunity he's really really out to the side right here you can see a second defender drops but again this is such a crazy crazy addition to your build to be able to do and for that matter i don't know if you could get these dunks to pop off if you just hold your x button so i do understand the general consensus behind people being mad about slashers in this game generally stems off the people that just run to the rim and hold their X button, which to be fair, in my opinion, I don't even think is that crazy OD. I've seen it from myself personally. I really don't have a big struggle when it comes to defending people like that. But on Twitter, I see a lot of just discourse about this where it's just a constant, constant just complaining and arguing about it, which I can't complain about other people's experiences on the game. I can complain, however, about you thinking that you're playing good defense on it when you're not. That's something that I can definitely give my two cents on because me personally I've seen a lot of people when it comes to the guards and stuff like that talk about oh well I'm a guard so I know how to defend guards and I make a really good lock because I know what a guard's looking for and <laughs> to be fair not many people on this game are slashers at all and they don't know how to defend the paint because they don't do it themselves so me personally I think I have some really good strats for it I'm probably gonna be dropping some videos talking about it that right there is a good example I actually tried to get a dunk meter to pop off however he's really far out to this free throw line ready to stop me because I think the worst way you can play defense as on a slasher is to sit here and below and that's where a lot of these bigs that have really good block rating really good interior defense rating they just sit here or below like in this area right here and they think that they can just play good defense just because they're tall that's not logical in the first place we've just seen all types of elite slashers in the nba just body someone who's sitting down below like on some rudy gobert stuff doesn't matter if you're seven feet tall with a seven nine wingspan <laughs> he's still gonna get bodied sometimes as long as they just avoid getting blocked and as an elite slasher that's kind of just how that stuff goes in real life too but it's at a much lower efficiency rate dunks are unrealistic to compare real life between like the video game as well so just keep that in mind but anyway back to the topic though of where he's defending me this is great defense by him on this possession he's really really in a great spot I, there's no way i can get that contact dunk meter to pop off right here because he's literally bodying at the free throw line i can't really do anything else either because he's on my opposite hip so i can't really do a spin lay to the left i can't hop to the left either if i try and do a little hop step gather through on the right hand right here i gotta let you guys know ball hand gathers whether it's like hops euros anything like that they're just not that good so 
to play a slasher's slightly offhand and still be up on him by that free throw line area and meet him right there is a huge huge part in stopping them and again i get a really really bad take right here however i do get the offense rebound i do have 94 o board on my build keep that in mind so that's definitely something you don't see on a typical slasher build but i think that's why wow, that's one that's well created again another perk that i have to this build and you'll see it showcased in the second gameplay that we have on 3v3 in this video but Another perk to this build is that I know I'm going to be around the rim very often. I have a very, very high tendency to be either doing stuff like this on the driving kick where I could pass a tonic right there, and if he misses, I'm still down there for the rebound, or for that matter, I'm a pick and roller sometimes too. So it makes a lot of sense for me to have the high offense rebound because I'll always be around the paint when my teammates' shots go up. Like this one right here as well, for instance. Again, if they miss stuff like that, I'm on the boards very, very often. Now, that's where I think one perk really leans toward being a pure slasher when it comes to that style because if you're someone who's maybe more of a point guard that just dunks sometimes you're generally not going to have a very good offense rebound rating at all so you can't really recover your own misses very often you can't really recover your teammates misses at all either so when you drive and kick and pass out to a big man if they miss it's probably just off and for that matter it's just not going to get rebounded either so right here last possession i actually come out here kind of tweak on the dribbles it's going to be a bad possession just wanted to showcase everything though because this is not a good one <laughs> so i run out of adrenaline he's locking me up real good i'm out of adrenaline i go for the dunk anyway and i still get past him now do i think this is bad defense right here not really i think this is honestly just slithery going hard and this is one of the brain dead things about slashing it's literally just like he's right there and he could be getting a body up on me he's maybe in a little bit bad position where he's a little bit slightly to the right instead of what could be a little bit to the left but again slithery goes hard bro it's probably one of the best badges in the game whether it lights up there or not i choose to believe slithery just makes that work to be honest with you because again it probably doesn't even pop up on the screen right there but anyway again we'll just go ahead and fast forward this end of the gameplay right here you're gonna see he pretty much just misses an open three i go in for this dunk now this is where i want to also talk about something that's extremely op now let's just backtrack a little bit i, I was talking for a while and i was kind of just rambling let me just explain what i'm thinking right here so for anybody that maybe could shoot the ball still, because obviously I can't shoot the ball. So this guy, he probably doesn't even have to respect my three-pointer the same way. But if you're someone who can shoot the ball, this is a pretty reasonable three-pointer to take. But let's just be theoretical and say he's a little bit closer. And this guy is running out at you to defend your three-pointer. And his mindset is, well, if he flies by me, oh well. I'm out of position. I have to jump at this, and it is what it is. The catch and run in this game is so crazy. The speed boost you get out of it is unreal. You can see I even go to the opposite ball hand that I was trying to, and I still get a crazy speed boost out of it and get that rack attack to the hoop. Now, like I'm saying here, if he was a little bit closer, I don't know why as a defender, you would sit here and be mad about someone hitting a catch and run on you when you know for a fact that if you close out too hard, they're not gonna shoot the ball and they're just gonna preload it and sprint past you. So my thing, you have to really know how to defend catch and run in this year's game. It's really a frustrating thing. I, in my opinion, I think it's even more toxic when it's paired with pick and pop, like from a big and stuff like that, where the point guard can shoot and he's going to rim run on some quick drop stuff too. And then he passes out to a pick and popper. Like imagine I'm the pick and popper out right here and you have to close out to him super hard. And then instead he just hits that catch and run cheese on you and he goes right by you. Now, right there, I miss a slightly late. That is something that happens with this dunk meter stuff as well is you make whites, you miss whites. You also make earlies very rarely but still occasionally and you even still miss slightlies very rarely and occasionally but again seven for ten right there not even an amazing game but definitely showcased a couple of the ways that you can make this work as a slasher i think on twos you always want to pair yourself with the taller build they, you just have to be at the one in my opinion if you're someone that really can't shoot or you're very unreliable as a shooter you really want to be at the point guard to take advantage of smaller matchups and generally have a taller shooter with you i think that's just kind of a good staple to have in your game to be able to do that for the lineup if you do play as like a 6 11 big man though and you are a little bit of a slasher i'm sure you guys do run into the occasional big man that you really can't dunk on because they're just super tall and they're gonna defend you really well but again if you mix in with some popping and some three-point ability it makes it very hard for guys like that to even defend you so it's all kind of a toss-up it's hard to define what truly is a slasher because there's so many different ways that you can define it but anyway into the second gameplay with my boy wolf and spillboy from 2k labs and wolf actually now paired with nba 2k as far as the gameplay development i'm looking forward to that too i'm really excited for my boy but Anyway, Wolf's on a brand new build. He's not playing very good in this gameplay. I'm just going to let you guys know ahead of time. Just so don't clown him or anything like that. Because like I said, brand new build, brand new style for that matter too. He was playing on a small point guard that had good steal rating. And as we all know, the small guards are a little bit hard to play on. So let's talk about that. If Wolf is struggling in this game and Spillboy doesn't have a whole lot of like offensive, I would say like dribbling in his bag, so to say. And what does that leave us with? 
I might just have to like kind of take the game over a little bit. So I want to talk about what you maybe can provide as a slasher. Now right there, <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I get my stuff swatted by the big man and he's, he's pretty tall too. And obviously that's one thing I'm already knowing as I load this game up. With another thing that I want to talk about with how good you can be as a slasher, one of them included is, once again, the positional matchup. So, if I have small people lined up on me, it means that I can generally bait Spillboy's defender to step down. And he maybe will drift down to the paint, defend like me on the drives and stuff like that. You'll see it even showcased way more throughout the course of the game. But generally, those tall dudes are going to either want to drop to you or switch to you. So, what I need to also let you guys know, and I don't have that provided in this lineup right now, but what I need you to know is, if you're a slasher and you make a build like mine and you expect to be able to play with it, what I need you to know is that you have to be very, very comfortable being a pick and roller as well. Because there will be some situations where maybe this tall guy in the corner is smart enough to switch down to me and he knows I can't shoot and then he just sits paint. You have to be able to just be a screener in those situations. You have to have someone on the court who can work pick and roll too. Because if you don't, you're going to struggle with some situations where that big dude is just going to stop you sometimes. The unfortunate truth to it is that tall guys kind of are just the counter to slashers in some situations. Now, I did mention that sometimes they just sit like right below the basket and they just beg to get dunked on. It's kind of stupid defense. Not to mention either slash take. It really doesn't care who's in the way. So there's a couple caveats to this. I would say the one really, really big one, like I just mentioned, is that if you have slash take, you can really go at anybody if we're being completely honest. The other thing being, like I said, if the big dude is playing bad defense and he's just sitting in the paint with really no, no really smart tactics to it or anything like that, you can still generally dunk on him. It's going to be a harder one though with the dunk meter. It's just going to be smaller because of his interior defense likely. And to be fair, bigs aren't very commonly found in the park this year. Generally, it's going to be in the wreck, and they really only play one of the five. It's not very often people even bring two bigs into the wreck, for that matter. I've seen a lot of lineups when I load up with subs in the in the, in the stream and stuff like that, that people generally run like a 6-9 in their power forward and stuff like that. They just come out here with literally like a 6-8, 6-8, 6-9, 6-9, maybe a 6-7 somewhere mixed in there for the Hall of Fame glove and stuff like that. But for the most part, they only have one big on the court. But again... Just know in some of those situations, like even right here, we're trying to expose the big man's like lack of prim D and get the big man involved. And I just pass a spillboy real quick. He could even still work pick and roll. And now, as you can see, I have him on me in the like pick and roll setting. So how do you expose this? Unfortunately, he plays good defense. And again, you need a little bit more of a pick and roll threat than spillboy right here. He's like six foot eight, six foot nine, not the fastest, doesn't really have like crazy fading ability or anything like that. You can see this is a very good setup by him though. It's just a little bit hard to set up out the corner because you can see the big man doesn't step up very like high enough to respect this. Again, if he fades this to the like three point line, more likely I can actually be open on this. But again, you have to put these big guys in the pick and roll if they end up guarding you. It's really just the truth to it and there's no avoiding it. So again, to kind of segue back to the title of the video, how good really are slashes in 2K23? I think they're great to counter the meta. I think this constant 6869 stuff where people don't really have anything more than probably 70 into your D on their build. I know you're probably someone out there watching and you have more than that and you're like, well, I do, Laker. Well, I understand. I get it. But generally, most of these people who make the 6'9 demigods and stuff like that, they probably have around 70 into your defense. They don't have great strength. They really don't have great anchor or anything like that either. Also, just to make mention of it, obviously, like I said, the offensive rebounding ability of this, this is a very tall big man right here that we're matched up on, but speed, beating him down court, and then getting position on this, I have Hall of Fame box out beast, 94 offensive rebound to be able to get that gold rebound chaser. So even when Spillboy misses some threes right here, I'm still on these. Like my dude is snagging on the big man right here. And it leads to sometimes kick out threes because sometimes these guys just drop down. And because I'm in great position, they end up just like really getting lost in the off ball defense. Now right there, he actually defends it pretty well. Spill hits the really contested shot. Shout out to my boy too. I really have fun playing with him. I know he doesn't have a whole lot of time to play the game too often because he's busy making the videos and stuff like that too. And mine is more gameplay centered. Obviously his is more testing so it's a little bit tough for him to hop on 2k super often but i have a great time playing defense with him and really just like just also playing the game with him he's a cool dude but anyway stop the rim run right there now this is where i want to talk about it too i mean this guy right here definitely has a good enough dunk rating there's no way he goes up with something like this if he doesn't and again the key is i jump a little bit early than I, i'm literally like jumping right now or like right here as you can see because you have to start this jump a little bit early to kick them out of their dunk and as you can see we just get that stuff out of here and 
really all I ever have on this build is either bronze anchor or no anchor. As you're gonna see, it doesn't even pop up right here. So I'm not even running anchor for that matter. And <laughs> really, I only have 81 block rating, 72 into your defense, something like that, like 74, I forget what it is. But either way, you can really stop this stuff. And that's why I wanna maybe talk about this in this part of the video is to talk about how good really can you be if you don't use that dunk meter? In my personal opinion, this take right here, I would not have dunked on him if I just held X. He's in great defensive like position. He kind of just stops me like right at this like free throw line area. And if I hold my X button right here, this is dead. I'm not like getting a dunk right here. And that's why I want to say too, I don't think it's as brain dead as people think it is. To be fair, I do understand maybe there's some situations where, like I said, as a big man, you're sitting down here and then someone is starting their dunk from way out here and they use that limitless takeoff and they're taken off from literally like the runway and they just fly over your head. Again, if you're a big man and you're defending slashers, get your tall self out that paint and move at least slightly up to here. I'm telling you, if you're a center and I'm attacking you on the fast break right here, if you're standing right where this guy is, I cannot even dunk on you. Even if I use my dunk meter, it's probably not working. The only reason this one did right here is because he, like I said, has very bad interior defense. But that's the only reason I'm able to even get this dunk meter to pop off. And once it does, and like I said, on slash takeover, you can really go crazy with it. It really does not care who's in the way as long as you can get it to pop off. Anyway, this big man ends up missing a shot right here. I want to let you know this turnover is actually on me. I need to be running a better route for Wolf right here. And I really did set him up this game. I'm not going to lie. So again, do not flame him at all. And also this is old gameplay too. So he's probably better at this point guard stuff now anyway. But again, maybe one thing as a slasher too, because as you're going to see like on this rebound attempt right here, I thought both these guys had it down. Like they kind of sandwiched this guy. And then this dude's like way out here again, big man was like busy taking the shot. So he can't grab the rebound. So right here, I'm kind of leaking a little bit, but I need to run a better route because I run right into this guy who ended up staying back on D. You can see, I try and break out to the right last second, but he gets a really good lane. And like I said, just got to run a better route on the fast break. It is what it is though. Obviously <laughs> I kind of choked that possession for us, but oh well. Right here, you're gonna see me and Spill playing the solid defense. We're gonna end up just playing some good pick and roll D. All right, now this part right here, I wanna ask you guys, do you consider this slashing as well? The only reason I would maybe consider it is because when we talk about the lack of interior defense or interior defense being bad in this game, some people might talk about stuff like this where you can just rise up and get really good standing dunks. I don't know if that's the case though. So I don't wanna spend too much time talking about that. Either way though, Spillboy, not very good into your defense. He doesn't have hardly anything on his build. Now, this part of the gameplay is where we get into actually taking over and playing elite. And again, I really have to credit slash take to that. Now, the threat, you have to know what threat you are to the defense as well. So right here, I'm putting the pressure on their guard. I get past him, right? And this is where you need to know constantly. If you have a shooter at the big man, these tall dudes, they get so hungry for stepping down and helping on stuff like this. You can see, boom his all his direction is shifting toward the paint right here and as as long as i'm ready to dot and not just only panic passing like if i didn't have my icons up right there and then right now i'm just like oh shoot this big man's dropping all right i gotta go get ready to throw over to spill and then for all i know then he just like baits and returns back to the corner because now i'm no longer a driving dunk threat i'm just below the basket but my whole point here is be ready to pre-dot these bigs because as soon as I get the slash take on I'm driving and I'm as you can see I have my icons up mad early and boom we get spill for a free three so even though the dude was super tall and just bodied spill boy in the paint right there on the last possession it doesn't matter we get a three off it because once again the slasher threat and us being up by enough was also a huge deal now this is why I think slashes are also so good in this game and have so much viability in the past where it's such a three hunt heavy game like 2k22 next gen or 2k21 current gen slashers don't really work out in those and realistically you're playing from behind on the scoreboard too much to be able to just trade twos back and forth like that and again let alone contested finishes on stage maybe you take your slips and just dunk the ball if they double team your point guard but for that matter then dudes were just having poppers play at the big man and you just really refuse to take twos very often only at the very end of the shot clock in this game where defense is so good you take any bucket you can get and that's where i really do think the viability of slashers works and again you can do stuff like this where i know they're gonna really like defend that three and as long as you cut through on that right time and you can and you can time your slips good because this is where i also think this, the power of slashers are too is the driving lob catching ability because if i slip right here regular and spill passes to me regular now it comes down to a very contested finish where i get a paint mash maybe and I have to deal with him blocking me from behind. I have to deal with the pass even getting through on a regular pass interception possibility. To be able to rise up and catch these on alley-oops goes such a long way. This is a really, really 
really good take right here really good pass by him and again it's all at the expense of the power of slashing and it really really can be good in this year's game if you ask me now i have yet to test this out in pro-am at a really really high level i cannot wait to though i know you guys can't wait to see it either for that matter but we're just waiting on time to get back from this trip we got to figure out the team we got to figure out the lineup and stuff like that so it's just a little unfortunate and kind of frustrating to be honest but not on tonic's part just kind of trying to set up the team the right way and all that stuff but i do expect to be able to do some slashing stuff in pro-am too i also i get killed out the corner here by the spot up it was pretty embarrassing but i do expect to be able to come out here run some like I would say point forward stuff where I'm going to be a pick and roller on offense and then feature in as kind of a third or secondary ball handler where I can just get the ball, do some cool stuff, pretty much like this. And while the court may be more condensed, if we have four shooters around it, I really do think the paint won't be too packed and I'll be able to kind of run just some five out drive and kick stuff as long as their big isn't matched up on me. And again, if their big is matched up on me, I'm a pick and roller. It's about as simple as that. That's where I think the versatility of being a slasher, if you can be a good pick and roller and ball handler slasher at the same time, that's where your truly elite aspect comes out to play. Now, right here, we get the big man on us. He does play pretty high though. So that's where I take advantage of it and just kind of get past him and go for the regular dunk. And I gotta say, it is so fun doing stuff like that when people actually have to respect the shot a little bit or think they do. And that's why I think if I make a shooting build, oh my God, it'd be so fun to just expose these tall bigs out here. So right here, I'm going to end up trying to ISO him. I just kind of back it up, however, and we're going to try and go for this contact dunk. I get past him, but boom, either way, I get the wide open dunk meter to pop off. And also, this is not an easy one to make by any means. This is an open dunk, albeit it's literally like so small. It's crazy. And he can still block this from behind too. I still have to time it well, obviously, for that matter. And it's definitely a tough dunk to make, but either way, boom, get that one to go. Really good game right there. I, I definitely went hard in that game for sure. And like I said, you could see toward the second half of the game, kind of put the team on the back and just go crazy. And that's what this build really can do. Its efficiency rate can be good. However, I want to let you know, if you are the dude that's going to be using your dunk meter and missing a lot, it's going to lead to fast break threes, fast break points for the other team tremendously. And it's going to happen a lot. I promise you, if you miss those dunks, it goes flying. People grab rebounds. The defense reacts faster than the offense because the offense kind of just stays still and assumes that maybe they'll get a free three pointer if the team tracked it down or something like that. And again, it just leads to fast break, easy points. But if you can be efficient with this stuff, it's crazy. And again, to talk about the people that do hold their X button for the dunks, it's still pretty good. I've seen a lot of people complaining about it, about how easy it is to do. But again, wouldn't let that happen to me though. Well, that's all I'm saying. But again, I really do think slashing has seen a pretty good improvement in this year's game. I think a lot of the slasher community out there is pretty happy about this. And me, myself, I've been able to make videos about slashers and relate to the community with it for probably about two to three years now, for that matter. I would say 2K20 was the last time. 21 was just way too easy. Then with 22, with the dunk meter being brand new, barely anybody tried to use it as well, for that matter, in that game. And it really, X button dunks were just horrible in that game too. In this year's game, they definitely seen an improvement. I don't really know whether to say it's an easier year to dunk this year than it was last with the meter, but either way, they've both been pretty doable as far as using your dunk meter. And again, last year's game people really just hated using their x button stuff like that the majority of the community was just 65 dunk builds that had quick drops off one or i think it was 75 that gave you the silver limitless takeoff so again that's pretty much everybody did, just did simple as that or they're just an outside small guard and that's all they did so again it's nice to be able to kind of reunite with the slasher community and be able to actually like talk to people when i'm making the videos about it and give some insight rather than just being like look at me I do this. Nobody else does it in the whole game. <laughs> and to be fair, not many people do use the dunk meter. I ran a poll on Twitter recently, and it was pretty crazy to see. I'll actually let you guys see it for that matter. All right, so I just wanted to show this at the very end of the video right here as a nice little display. And it doesn't really mean a whole lot. Only 473 people have voted on it. But I wanted to ask, how many people have you played against using the dunk meter as a rough estimate? I gave options of less than 5, 5 to 15, and 15 plus. <laughs> a very high percentage of the community has played less than 15 people all year that have even used their dunk meter. Around literally like 70, 76% of the people that were on this poll. And only 17% said more than 15. I don't even know if I believe that so much for that matter. I've only played around like 5 people myself and only one of them, maybe two. One of them was a demon with it. The second one maybe only used it like one time, maybe two, but he was already a really good player. And I was like, wow, he's got the dunk meter in his bag too. That's crazy. But 
again, I've only really played one dude who demolished us with the dunk meter. That's it. And he, ironically, he could shoot too, for that matter. It was pretty crazy. But anyway, then I asked what percentage of people you've played with or you've played against, would you say use the dunk meter rough estimate around the majority of the community say less than 4%. <laughs> so that's again, also pretty crazy. I don't know how you could possibly ever say like 17% uh, said more than 15, but then more said five to 10%. That's actually crazy because I don't think they understand how much like of the people they play is actually 10% of their games. But like, think about that though, five to 10%, if you've played 500 games on park means literally that you've played 25 to 50 people <laughs> that have used their dunk meter. And that is well into this range right here. Yet this one has more percent answered for that. Now, to be fair, not all the same people have answered the polls, but it is what it is. Either way, as you can see, not many people using their dunk meter. And I really do think you guys need to maybe open up to that a little bit. It really does increase your overpoweredness of just being a slasher or having good dunks on your build. I really think you're doing yourself a disservice if you have 99 dunk and you don't use the meter. It's kind of crazy, but to be fair, maybe I need to try the build out like that and maybe just play purposely like only using X, X button and only doing stuff like that. Or maybe focus more on euros and stuff like that, more finesse slashing, so to say. But anyway, that's all video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did for the drop a like, sub if you're new, turn on noties, all that good stuff. Like always, try one of 2000 likes. If you made it to the end of the video, put slash or put lake in the comments, search ports mid all the way through. But anyway, other than that, hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned. I will talk about how to defend slashers in another video pretty soon. I want to, <laughs> the problem is I don't get a whole lot of gameplay against someone who just forces their way to the paint, but I definitely will be on the lookout for recording those types of things of cutting people off and stuff like that, where you want to play against them and just how to defend slashers in general. But anyway, that's all for video. Hope you all enjoyed. I'm Matt TV, man. Peace.